When you're driving the back roads, you probably see nature and beauty. But we see deals. Oh, wow. This is amazing. I'm Marty Gable, and I've been in the antiques business for more than 15 years. They call me Bam Bam. I love hunting down mantiques and anything with wheels. Oh, holy moly! It's like we're inside a treasure chest. Although we may be opposites, we travel together. Hoping to attract the best in back road bounty. Another great day, buddy. This is what we do. It is. Beautiful. Well, it's either this or growing a beard. That's what I do. When are you, uh, when are you jumping on team looking awesome being a man? The only time I grow a beard is when I'm too lazy to shave or my team makes playoffs. I can't do it. So, I just... I feel like Kenny Rogers or something. It might, it might suit you, man. Some people are into it. And it keeps dust off your face. It's a natural filter. And let's talk about your facial hair. <laughs> we're going to see a guy named Brad today. The Rad. Today, we're going to see Brad. Apparently, he's been collecting for a few years now. And he's selling the place, and he's got to unload some stuff on us. Hello there. How are you? I'm doing well yourself. Good to see you. Brad Law. Nice to meet you, Bam Bam. Hey, nice Brad, I'm you. Marty. Nice to meet you, Marty. Thanks for having us. Oh, good. Thanks yeah. for coming. This Thanks is, for coming. This is an epic spot, man. Oh, great. I'm we saw this sign yeah. coming in. Lakefront property for sale. Yep, do that. I don't do even bad. know what you're thinking selling it, but I'm not even going to ask. It's not time to, to move on. There's always time to move on, you know? So how long have you been out here? Five years now. Five yeah. years? Yeah. Okay. I moved up from the city. City, what'd you do back there? I was a police officer, 32 <laughs> years. Just Brad Law. Close. The police yeah. officer. <laughs> oh, OK. It's all right. He just got to go into his pockets. He gotta... Apparently, he's a cop. So besides hanging out with the locals and fishing off the dock, what else are you doing up here? All collecting. I go around, I do yard sales, I do auctions. Oh, uh, really? So the rumors are re true. Resharing it. We heard, so. we heard you were an avid collector and that there might be some stuff for sale. The best thing to do is just to take you inside and show you what it is, and I, I'm sure you guys will appreciate it. So Surprise us. Come on. Perfect. Surprise Excellent. us indeed. And I'd like to show you uh, my man cave. This is what, uh, what I've put together for Little bar area and oh, my uh, wow. little bar area and my soda shop. Man, it just goes on. This is a time machine. This is a full out diner. I'll show you the uh, some of the stuff in the soda shop itself. Ugh. I mean, I, I got the chairs shop? originally from uh, Toronto Woolworths. They're from the 40s. Are these the old paper hats? Paper hats for Piggy Wiggly for and Krispy Kreme. <laughs> well, right Shake behind bar. you, too, you've got the milkshake mixer. Milk That's a great-looking piece. It is the most complete 50s throwback diner shake shop. This is unbelievably finished. This is, you, you don't really want to add anything more to this. This is it. You're selling the place. What do you plan on doing with all of this? My hope is you you find somebody that's got the same passion that you've got. I mean, this this stuff won't fit where I'm going. Right. So I'm hoping it stays where it is. Yeah, my hope is obviously to keep that diner intact and when I sell my residence that the, the new people enjoy it as much as we have. If it came down to it, the new homeowner didn't want this stuff, you could sell it off to somebody opening up a 50s diner. Yes. Or a prop house or yeah. a production company or something along those lines. Yeah, the pieces you have here from the period phone to the standing signage are all really standalone pieces. Just gorgeous stuff. Stuff we don't see very often at all. So now I'm wondering, are we going to sit around all day drinking artificial food or are we going to get some deals? Let's do some treasure hunting. All Let's right. do it. So we see this incredible diner set up. And then Brad says he's got some things outside for us to take a look at. I can only imagine what he's got stashed away. So come on in. This All is right. where we'll start. Ah, look. As soon as we walk in the garage, there's a ton of stuff. There's boxes piled up everywhere. There's stuff kind of laid up on the wall. Looks like you've got some stuff in trunks and over All here. All the trunks are full. There's, uh, you're more than welcome to take your time, poke through them, and, and see what's there. You know what that is? I'm going in. <laughs> that one's empty. That one feels empty. Hold on. Let me look at uh -oh. this, though. It depends on the ocean. See, Lucy. So they were making 40s. these right up until the 1940s, pretty much. What do you want out of this one here as is? 10 bucks. You can probably throw a few things in it, too. I'll take Excellent. it. Excellent. Leave it to Marty to start buying stuff to put other stuff he's buying in. <laughs> ah. I wanted to make sure we got the deals rolling along, so I gave him a good price on it of 10 bucks, and uh, he was very happy. I'm going to go a different route. That price seemed reasonable, so I'm just going to make a pile. Are you OK with that? Yeah, that works for me. Let's do it. Hey, Brad. 
Yeah. There's yeah. a private parking uh, sign over here. It says it's enforced by law. Is that you, B-Law? Yeah. <laughs> law is enforcing it. I'm warning you right now, Brad. It's going to be one of those days. You're going to hear a lot of uh, bad cop jokes. OK, well. Yeah. If, if we get good deals, you might hear some good cop jokes. <laughs> <laughs> the guys pouring the cocktails and the monkeys banging the drums, those are the more common ones, right? Yeah. In this condition, yep. knowing it's a common one, I'd give you 15 for him. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah? OK. I'm just trying to get something for your trunk. Oh, he's getting some ashtrays. I got Goodyear. I got Firestone. And so far, I think I might have a great day. I got a ton of lures. I'm not, that's kind of cool. Ah, uh, you got to take the whole box, though, right? <sighs> I got so much tackle. What do you, what do you got to have out of the box? Well, how's 15 sound? <laughs> 15 sounds good. Let me tell you something. So I've got a couple I picked out here. How about I throw those in and give you 20? That'd be perfect. Deal. Yeah, I appreciate it. Hey, are any of you guys into uh, pharmaceutical or medical stuff at all? Me. Oh, good. Good. Well, I got quite a bit of it. There's, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but the upstairs in the attic space up here goes the whole length of the garage. There's about 40 boxes. Go, and Marty. Go, of... Marty. A lot of it's some medical stuff up there. A lot of it, medical Let stuff. Go, Marty, go. Out of your way. And I was going to say, he'll tackle a cop over this. I've yeah. seen him do it. Look at him. I've never seen oh, him move so fast. Oh, yeah. Oh, holy crap, man. There's stuff everywhere. All right. This is like breaking into the Christmas stash. Let's go. You better be careful. The cops could be here any minute. <laughs> yeah. This guy says he's a cop, but with all the stuff that he's got, I'm pretty sure he might be a dealer. So this is an old apothecary jar with a nice glass stopper on it. Is all this medicine? Because this one kind of looks like a urine sample. <laughs> like a failed not, urine not like sample. like mine. OK. <laughs> that's, that's a failed urine sample. Someone's mine comes, very, mine comes out clearer. That's very dehydrated. You, so. I'm just going to pick that up. I bet you were, buddy. What do we got? Well, it's a nice little poster for a carnival. So it's got some age. And, and right here, 1960, Bel Air four-door sedan. That's a big attraction for the show. What you got in your hand there, Bam Bam? I was just going to show this to you, buddy. I figured you might want to take a swing at it. I've actually had this one before uh, from a couple of different years. This one's going to be from the 1940s. It's basically a pinball game is what it is. Yeah. I like the uh, the carnival poster. Right. And I like the, the pinball game. How much do you want for those guys? So is it the higher we go, uh, the higher the prices? Is that the way the things are supposed to work? Actually, I want bargain basement prices in the attic. How's uh, 15 for the pair? I think that's a smoking deal. And I'm going to put them aside right there. I, I found something, and it says on the box that it's collectible. Marty, should I be fooled? <laughs> I think so. It's not an epic one, but it is a motorcycle and a sidecar. Yeah. Uh, I'm throwing it in the pile. So here's a nice bottle here. I'm going to ask you for a price on this particular bottle, and that's just going to determine how many more I pick out, I think, and build my own box. OK, well, where are you comfortable at on them? I'm thinking probably around ten to fifteen dollars. No, we're we'll in that we're we're right in the same ballpark. So yeah, oh, that's good to you know. You put that. stuff together and All right. we'll work it out. Here's another good pinball machine. The big game. The big game. So this one's going to be newer than the last one. Yeah. I'm going to put this over here because I'm, I'm going to be picking through a lot of boxes, and I think I'm just going to make a pile with some of this stuff. Sounds good. Oh, that's kind of cool. For freshly dipped ice cream cones and cups. Yeah, the old cone dispensers. Probably 1960s on that one, too, eh? I would think so, yeah. Yeah. So what do you want out of this guy? Um, $15. Yeah, that works for me, I guess. I'll put that in the pile. Yeah. It's always fun seeing these old leather cases. That's, yeah. Dude, you really got really bad or really good. And this one's not bad. Yeah. But is it good? So it's a handheld film camera for making your own home movies. <laughs> and it's going in the pile. Bam, bam. What do you got, bud? Check that. Oh, sweet. So this is an old Texaco motor oil can with a built-in spout. Nice. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. You don't see these very often. It's a 1926 can. It should be mentioned down in the writing, down on the bottom here, I believe. Okay, so. I'm not going to throw this one right in the pile, because you seem to know a lot about this. Yeah. Um, what do you need out of it? It's, it's a high one. Give me a price. <laughs> I, had, uh, I had priced it in my mind about 175 Really? Yeah. The prices were great all day leading up to that point, until we get to that peaks. Yeah. So what's your best price on it? Thank you.
Okay, so I'm not gonna throw this one right in the pile because you seem to know a lot about this. Yeah. Um, what do you need out of it? It's it's a high one. Give me a price. <laughs> I had uh, I had priced it in my mind about 175. Really? Yeah. Marty naturally was looking for a steal on that can, but as a formal police officer, there's just no way in the world that I was letting him get away with that. Yep. So, what's your best price on it? I do 160, 150. Yeah, I'm gonna put it back in the box. It may end up in the pile. Okay. Yeah. It may not end up in the pile. If it's not in the pile, it's too rich for me, and I'm not gonna take it to my chances on it. I want to see what else I can find here because I haven't even looked at the bottles yet. We were getting such great deals; it wasn't really in the same mix with the rest of today. I wanted to keep getting the great deals and not take a chance on just one piece. Okay, well, you guys have got, still got a pile of boxes to go through, so why don't I leave you to do that? Put your piles together, and uh, we can sit and talk later on and uh, see where you want to go with them. All right, works for me. Awesome, Excellent. sounds good. All right. All right, thanks, guys. So what do you think on the Texaco piece? Um, if you can get it for 100, will you buy it for 100? I, I don't know if I would or not. I'd, I'd look around. Yeah, and when you're selling online, like, you do a lot of that. You yeah. know what you're going to get out of it. So it's it's kind of up to you if you feel like you can take the risk. If not, he's got tons of stuff, mm -hmm. right? It's not like we can't find more treasure here. Right. I'm going to finish making my pile and head to the door. We definitely found treasure, buddy. Oh, good, good. Definitely found some treasure. <laughs> and and a lot of it was upstairs, so we just kind of put together piles. I, I only negotiated one, one and a half little pieces down here with uh, with the tackle. Right. Which you were going to give to me for 15 bucks, and I threw in a couple of more modern everyday lures that I know I can get five bucks out of, and went for 20. Perfect. Great deal. Perfect is right. Now, I found a couple things here. I've got a few of these tire ashtrays. And then I've got a, a couple little junk boxes here. I got the little motorcycle and sidecar. In here, I got a little junk box. There's the tiny little Lesney cars in here. These are a tiny scale Lesney car, the old gray wheels. Yeah. And you don't see a ton of them because not only did they get broken, they get lost. They're super tiny. The original micro machines. And I got this little box of goodies. So I've got, you know, the motorbike, a shaving mug, which I got to get off the street before someone uses. <laughs> you pay a lot for any of this stuff? Not an awful lot, no. Okay, no. perfect. I like I like where you're going. Yep. What are you thinking for this? I don't know. You hit me with what, what your price is. I was gonna say sixty bucks. Yeah, I would have been right around there as well. So sixty on that and twenty-five on that, eighty-five bucks. That sounds great. Done. You're the man. You're Thanks the it. man, Marty. Let's you see if I, let's see if you can do this without breaking the law. Okay, so we talked about a few things. First thing here was the trunk right here. That's correct, yeah. That was $10. And then we got the boozing captain for 15 Correct, yeah. And we got the one big shot game by Gotham. And the advertisement here, that was 15 for the pair on those. That's correct. And then we had $15 here on uh, the cone holder. Yeah. So the rest of it, we got the, the plastic game here with the nice graphics. Yes. We got the peanut oil tin. And this is where it gets messy here. Because uh, it's like, uh, I had to put stuff in a box and go down the ladder. So. We got a couple more tins. I got about eight or nine pieces from the Mr. Peanut collection up there. <laughs> we got the Super 8 camera right here. Right, right. And then the apothecary jars. There was a lot up there, but I'm only looking for the better ones. Yeah. I chose the ones with the glass stoppers that had some sort of label on them. Right. Uh, the rest of them without a label, very common. You can pick them up at almost any antique shop. So. There's a nice little variety there. So that's the apothecary section right there. That's a piece of chalet glass. Right. With the big chip on it. I was yeah. just going to point that out and hand it back to you. OK. Great. <laughs> <laughs> We've negotiated a pile here. Yep. Which is $55. And then this is what's left. OK. Where are you on the rest? So for the rest of the pile right here, I'll give you $140. So for the rest of the pile right here, I'll give you $140. Yeah, that, that, that'll work for me. That's pretty fair. Good stuff. Pretty fair. Awesome. Thanks very much. Thank you. Deal. We don't want to upset the law. I know. Especially <laughs> Mr. Law. 
Thank you so much. Let's Thank roll the band. Guys. All right. Overall, Brad's, Brad's been a great guy. Mm -hmm. Great collectibles, great place, great to deal with, didn't arrest us. It's been a good day. Man, that was all good cop. Incredible deals. Man, we see so many people, so many collectors. This guy stands out. Those guys are so hot, I want to speed right out of there. <laughs> we better be careful, man. We made out, like you said, like bandits. He has no. so much phenomenal stuff that he's willing to let great stuff go at freaking crazy prices. For him, it's win-win. I think if he got his money back on this stuff, he was happy. I really love all the time and effort he put into creating that fantastic diner in the basement. And it's a real shame that he's going to have to give that up. Man, that stuff is so good, you might not even have to be a collector to appreciate that. You're gonna, anyone's gonna walk in there and be blown away. Where was that cop last time I needed somebody? Yeah, no kidding. I, when I want to get out a speeding ticket, I could use him on my side. Okay, so the beard. Are you gonna get rid of it? You know what, it's weird. I've, I've thought about it, but it's, it's gotta stay. It's got a relaxed view on life and a furrier face. So I think it's gonna stay, buddy. Yeah. Just took yours and went through some rough, rough phases, right? Well, I'm doing the same thing with my hair right now, you know. I'm growing it out. It takes it takes a lot of patience, Ben's son, to grow out the beard. <laughs> and the hair. <laughs> oh, hey, ladies, talking about a barbershop, barbershop. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is this the day you shave your beard? This is the day you get a haircut. It's always worth checking out a barber shop because a barber shop is always a great place to look for treasure. There could be old razors. Those old chairs are phenomenal and you never know what else you're gonna find. Oh man. Awesome. Hello there, sir. Bam Bam. Oh, how are you? Nice to meet you. I'm Marty. Yeah. Uh, I brought my friend in here to uh, shave his beard today. Yeah, oh, right. Yeah, well, I'm... I could fix that. <laughs> my name's Tony Klopmaker. I'm a barber and I own a little barber shop. So we're not really here for a haircut. Right. We're here because we buy and sell antiques. Okay. And yep. we saw your establishment here. We thought, okay, we gotta go check this place out. Sure, sure. And see if you happen to have a surplus of stuff you wanna sell. I don't have a large surplus. Most of the stuff's not for sale here, but there might be a couple of things that uh, I'd let go that I'm not too married to. All right, a couple little knickknacks kicking yeah, around. Sure, yep. You've got everything around yep. here. And the, the one thing that catches my eye is your custom sign here. Yep, yeah. Because this is funny, tooth pulled 95 cents. Because right. not many people know this, but barbers used to pull teeth as well. Exactly. Now, how long have you been collecting things? If you've been... I just started collecting 12 years ago when I opened the shop. Do you, do you search it out, or is this stuff that you just kind of find in your travels? We did a lot of traveling and uh, a lot of searching, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I see a lot of shaving mugs. That's yes. like... Is that your favorite thing to collect? It was, you know, what I really started with. So you've got all kinds of shaving mugs here. Yes. And, like, these ones are all china and porcelain. Yeah. Do you know how old they are? I'd say, you know, like, particularly, they're not terribly old. There may be something in the 1880s in there. Right. A lot of them early 1900s up to 1940s. Hey, Marty, do me a favor. Enlighten me. How does one shave with a mug? Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Tony, but you fill, <laughs> fill this up with the water. Hot water. Hot water right here. Right. And you put your shaving cream in here, and you put your brush in. Right. Put it on. Right. Start your shaving. You could dip your brush in the hot water. Right. Lather it up real good. Open up the pores. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You sure you don't want me to trim that, eh? That yeah. That make I... you look like a human being. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> it's just like, it, it must be it. driving you crazy to see, like, the strays coming out. Oh. Uh, I bet yeah. you he's seen worse. I've seen Guys worse. coming out of the woods off the back roads up here yeah. wearing a loincloth, got a couple leaves in it, maybe yeah. some birds. <laughs> Marty, is that a little bit of a mullet you've got there? Maybe you need a, a mullet? Trip. No, yeah. no, no. Man, you're you're it's one... all long. I'm growing it out. Oh, seriously, Marty needs a haircut. You got no. a couple little pipes down here. Yes. I don't know. I picked them up along my travels somewhere. Just part of the display because you got the smoker's yeah. cabinet right here. Smoker's smoker stand cabinet. right here. Yeah. The stand is a. It's got a humidor in it, and it's got a lighter and a. An old lighter that uses gasoline. Wow. And a cutter there for the. Uh, for the Cigar. cigars, and I would part with that if, uh, and it's been sitting there for 12 years now. Looking at it, I would say it's early 1900s, maybe 1930. Just out of curiosity, yes. what would you want for the tobacco cabinet? Well, I think I paid over $100 for it. Did you? Yeah, I know you guys don't pay retail, but uh, <laughs> I do, you see. 
Yeah, with the thing about retail is retail is like it's like flying a space shuttle. I've never done it. Right. I don't know anything about flying right. space shuttles or right. paying retail prices. Right. I don't know. I wouldn't I wouldn't come in much higher than about hundred dollars. I might offer you a hundred yeah. on it. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna tell you exactly how I feel about it. I'd take 125 bucks for it. That's not that's not a bad deal. I'm gonna think about that while think I peek around. That. Think about that. Because I know there's some other stuff up here on I'm the sure wall. Sure there is. I gotta get some of these razors off the street. Are you selling any of these straight razors over here? Straight razors are open, yeah. Open, open season, season on straight, on straight razors. Straight. You've got a really nice barber pool here. That's right. It's an electric one. Yes. Uh, you've got a nice barber shop sign in the window. Like, and you've got a nice rotating one over here. Yes. Like, are any of those for sale? Uh, not the uh, rotating ones. You know, there again, they, these are right from the 1950s. You know, I like the age on them, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd buy a new one like that for maybe $1,200. Really? I have one of these Marvy poles in the back there that I would part with. I would part with that chair over there. So this old chair here? Yeah. It could be. It could yeah. be bought. It could be bought. Only after it's been sold. It's a shaving chair. So how old would this be? I'm thinking that's about 18 something, 1850 maybe. It's a wow. very old chair. Yeah, like it has some restoration done to it. Yeah. It's a really unique piece. So I gotta ask, what would you sell it for? I would let that go for $600. I don't think I would ever use it properly. Cause it's a shaving chair and yeah, shaving's well, ridiculous. Right. Well, 600 isn't a bad price, but at the same time, that's not going to leave me much room to make much on it either. So what are these mugs here, Tony? These are mustache mug cups. So these are just for guys with mustaches, so you can have a drink. And you don't get the tea mm -hmm. and the coffee uh, in your mustache. I thought the mustache was to strain the tea or the soup or whatever. <laughs> no, I didn't know you needed a secondary that's just mustache. Disgusting. Now, I'm not gonna stand behind this 100%, but the claim is that they're ladies shaving mugs. I suppose ladies had things to shave as well. Well, you're absolutely right, they are. Yeah. You can tell. Well, first of all, look at the feminine graphics on it. Right. And, uh, and it's much smaller, it's more dainty, yeah. so yeah. if the lady's got some facial hair and she wants to look after it, yeah. if you got the full-on beard going, then you're just gonna have to shave your lady beard. You got it. Or go into the circus. Yeah, right, now that you're talking. So I've seen some straight razors around. There's a yes, couple over here. some in there, some yes. Some over there. Yeah. Well, how much do you ask for straight razors? Does it matter which one, or? I'd say you're looking at about 15 bucks a piece for them. Done. You like that price? Done! I guess he's gonna buy a few. Oh, yeah. Good. And you know what? For every razor I buy, yes. that's one more person that might be safe to grow a beard. Tony's a collector, but when he offered the razors to Bam Bam for $15 each, I knew he was ready to negotiate. So I would like to see the other sign you've got. Sure, it's for I've sale. got one back here. Let's follow you. I'm digging. This is where they pull the teeth. <laughs> so I would like to see the other sign you've got. Sure, it's for I've sale. Got one back here. Let's follow you. I'm digging. This is where they pull the teeth. Anyway, there's one. So this is the exact same. Exact same thing. And then, yeah, I see. What happened here? Is that just a touch-up? Like What's like that? That takes away from the value, though, quite a, little a bit. bit. Yeah. You want to be able to get yeah. that back off. It's almost better to have some wear on it than to have yeah. a bad touch-up, right? Yeah. Yeah, 1948. Yeah. And there's the 12th month. And then this one here, though. That's 1950s. It's just, you know, like. It's the homemade one. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, this one's not worth nearly as much as something like oh, this would be. Of course. So how much do you want out of this one? Well, now, this one here, I'd have to have 200 bucks for it. What if I take them both yes. for 225 I'd sell them to you. All right, then we got a deal. OK. And yeah. I got some armor poles. Yep. Now, I like them both, because yep. this can go to Great a collector for a big man cave piece who's got some more money. Yep. This can go to somebody else who just wants something cool to put on the wall that's yep. already weathered. Yep. Awesome. I want to see what Bam Bam's up to. Yep. You think he's shaving? I don't know. He I bet he's shaving. not. What's going on, buddy? Stockpiling for the Stockpiling. Uh, for Raisin Mageddon. Man, there's there's a lot of cool stuff here. I'm really glad that we stopped in. Yeah. To the power of five. While yeah. you guys were out digging for signs, yeah. I grabbed five straight razors, 15 bucks a piece. Yeah. I'm in for 75 bucks, and I haven't even got my haircut yet. Wow. Now we looked at the smoking stand, and you yeah. were in trying to get all your money back. Right. At 125. You got that. Are you right. sure it was 125? It was 125. Yeah. It wasn't one. 
you offered one, and I said I'd let it go for 125. If I keep talking high, it's not going to go to one. <laughs> well, look at no. I, I like even numbers. That's 75 bucks, yeah. right? And 125 making them even 200 bucks. Oh, son of a gun! Does that make sense to you? Throw in one more razor. You got a deal. Okay, you got a deal. Done. Awesome. Done. There. There you go. Good job. I've got to get the signs out of the back, so yes. I'm going to grab a screwdriver for Alrighty. those. Uh, I'm going to pass on the chair for today. Okay. But if yeah, I can no find spot. a buyer for it, I'm coming right back and loading yeah. it in the van, okay? Yeah. You got one? You good to go? I'm good to go. Okay. Alrighty. Let's grab your tools. You can tell Tony really takes pride in what he does because he's got a real collection and displays it like an old-time barber shop. It's really like stepping back into time. Yeah, it was really cool. So. We're done, and you've still got a beard. I've still got a beard. I made it out of the barber shop alive. And I still got my quaff. Man, you sure do. And honestly, I was blown away. Those were screaming deals, man. Straight razors, straight 15 bucks. I didn't even want a package deal. No. I'll, I'll buy them all day long at that, man. All day long. Well, you always have to ask when you go past an old barber shop or someplace like oh, that. Yeah. The fact that you were able to get the smoker sand and the razors, and I was able to get uh, a barbershop sign. That's pretty amazing. So today, we're not just going randomly down dirt roads. We got a phone call from this lady. Her name's Laura, and she's got a beautiful farm. She says it's really old. She did seem like she was a very motivated seller, and she mentioned a couple things about the hot rods. So I figured it was it was worth a jaunt anyways. Not too many ladies would like two guys showing up in a white van on their property. Man, and the ones that do, I'm kind of scared of. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Bam Bam. I'm Matt. Nice to meet you, Matt. Hey, Matt, I'm Marty. Nice to meet you, you too, too. This is this is a full out farm. It yeah. is. It is a full farm. What? 100 acres, yeah. A paradise it's, it's, by the looks of it. I wanted to give back to the animals. I had made my living off of animals, and I wanted to give back to them. So we turned this farm into a sanctuary and a rescue oh. farm for farm animals. Oh, that's great. That is. That's so really 20 good. years ago, we opened the doors to any animal that needed help. Mm -hmm. I was here to help it. And we get a lot of animals here. Well, I hear a lot of cockle doo doo going on over there. <laughs> like, how many animals and what types have you got out here? Well, right now we've got about 40 horses, and we've got donkeys, burros, goats, a lot of pigs. I think there's about 40 pigs. OK, so, so what brings us out here today, besides all of this? Yeah. Well, <laughs> my husband passed away a year and a half ago, and um, he was an avid car builder, antique cars, collector cars. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of car things, a lot of car memorabilia, car parts. He was an avid outdoorsman. He loved to fly fish. Wow. wow. Um, hopefully you'd find things that you like. I've got a lot of animals to feed, and okay. I have no income, and okay. I'm going to sell some of Larry's things. Everything I have is for sale to help pay for food for the animals. Oh. Um, <laughs> well, why don't you show us a way? I'd love to. We'll see how we can help I'd you I'd love to. Awesome. Follow me. Come on in. Oh, man. Oh, that's a big shot. Ooh. That's bigger than it looks from the outside. It's it is way big. bigger. I'm getting so... distracted. I see, like, an alligator skin case over here. Yeah. But uh, I gotta take a look at what's inside. It's gonna be a great banjo. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's an old banjo. This is our new banjo. Our secondary gig. Here we go. <laughs> I don't think we're winning any solid gold albums. Well, how old is this? I bought it when I was about 14, so okay. um, it's at least uh, 50 years old, at okay. least 50 years old. Well, it's still at in really least. good condition. How much would you want for something like this? Maybe $110, something like that. I don't think I can go wrong at $110, so I'm going to buy it from you. Thank deal. you. That's, That's awesome. Deal. We're totally starting a band. We're totally starting a band. A bale of hay is exactly $100. So every time you say $100, I, I see a bale of hay. See a bale of hay. Not One bale of hay. OK. I had no idea that hay bales were $100 each. Because I'm clearly in the wrong business. I should be farming right now with a piece of my mouth. Yeah, it's weird what they use for currency up here. There's more than just guitars and cool bells. I'll get back to this in a second. But there's, there's old toys up here that are right up my alley. So not only do you have some good old Tonkas, but these Lincoln ones were just as popular. But these are in really nice shape. Mm -hmm. A lot of the nice paint on them. They're built around the age of their the model. Yeah. Every, so that would be in the every truck late here 40s. Every truck is pre-late 50s. They're really sought after toys. Let's talk farm feed. <laughs> How much do you got to have for these guys? 
About 175 for the three of them. I could do 150. A bale and a half. <laughs> Done. Done. Deal. Awesome. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So far, it's going really, really well. We got a lot to get through. Yeah. I feel like there's an opportunity here to feed some more animals. This is this absolutely is a fire bell. Is it? Yeah. And these some of these things have been with us for 50 odd years. Yeah. How uh, how much do you want for this? I would really like $200 for that. Okay, for 200. It's a little rich for my blood as a collector, but Marty, you might want to make an offer on this. We don't see a ton of this stuff, buddy. Uh, and it is original. I'll give you 125 though. That's about the best I could do. Yeah, you're a nice guy. Now we're up to that. <laughs> now we're up to that three quarters of a bail. Now we're getting there. <laughs> now we're getting there. So this here is a... a little cedar, it, isn't it? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I've got it's a, a major version of this. It's a, it's a horse-drawn seed box. Well, yeah, this is going to be around 1880s, maybe turn of the century. It, Will it sit flat? It does. OK, hold yeah. on. Now I got to look. It does. Laura shows me a piece. It was an old cedar box. A little refinishing, and I've got a fully functional bench with storage that I can make good money on. Carvings on the side. What do you want out of this? Um, $80. Eighty dollars. We're making a bench. So old. <laughs> That's great. All right, so I'm not really into the car parts and stuff too much, but I did find one interesting piece here. Oh, you got a good eye. It's it's an old uh, watch or a clock, it's, and it says Ford. It's actually not a watch. It's actually a car clock. So this has got some age to it. Absolutely. I see some, I see some brass. Nineteen ten. I think I was, I was thinking twenties or thirties. And it works. I'm pretty sure it works. It ticks for a couple seconds and stops. So it'll have to be serviced. I, I, I have to ask for a price not working, but in very good condition. I have $45. I'll take a chance at 45 For sure. I think it's pretty awesome. Another deal. <laughs> Are you doing the math? Are we keeping track of this? Oh, yeah. Who's keeping track? <laughs> Do I need a piece of paper? Oh, dude. Marty. We've seen one of these in our travels, buddy. We have. I don't see a ton of these. Porcelain license yeah. plates, and this one's from BC. I'm thinking, I'm thinking a half a bale of hay. Yeah. Done. Half a bale, <laughs> half a bale plates, man. <laughs> well, there's no head on there. It looks like a giant yeah. pin cushion. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised Bull wouldn't be here to pick them up. It's a small moose, too. Yeah, it, it definitely is a small moose. How much do you want for it? I'll tell you what. I wouldn't want to make money on that. You can have them. They're yours. Well, I can't take stuff for free when I'm when well, you have to I'll feed your animals. I'll charge you more for something else. I'll give you twenty-five dollars. <laughs> take it. She's take taking it. twenty-five dollars. Deal. Oh hey, looks like you got a couple of dinky toys. Any ones like these are good because you've still got the print on the side and all the tires. This is also sticking out, and this is an old Ronson lighter. Pretty smooth looking. It is. It's, it's probably from the late 60s. Ronson's a really, really popular company. I think, as a collector, I'd offer you f a half a bale on this, otherwise known as $50. OK. Done. OK. These are gas wall sconces. There's a matched pair here. So these are going to be quite early. These are going to be early 1900s. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but maybe I can make a cool project out of it. I'd pay you $20 for something that goes in my project file. Done. Awesome. Done. It just keeps going. Oh, it really opens up into what I see is car covers, <laughs> which you generally don't put on like a really high mileage Chevette. What do we got going on over here? These two vehicles are here for storage. Um, but Larry had a dream. He had a, a, a goal, and that was to break a land speed record. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And so he started building a salt flat car, and he was successful in fulfilling his bucket list. Th and that's he this? Raced, raced the car, and he, he was successful, and How he fast did, he go? did it. 200 miles an hour. 200 miles an hour. And this is a Model A. You're kidding. You want to see it? Yes, yes. please. Yes. Holy crap. Two hundred miles an hour. This is a Model A. You're kidding. You want to see it? Yes, yes. please. Just... Holy crap! Swamp auger. Oh, I love the name. Holy. Cow. That is unreal. 
<laughs> has no brakes. It stops by a means of parachute. <laughs> Underneath this tarp is a Bonneville Salt Flats car that broke 200 miles an hour with no brakes. If you look at the front there, the air intake, that's a, a cocktail shaker. <laughs> So he used whatever he had around he to find. make his dream come true, Absolutely. and he did it. So after he had driven it once, he started building car number two. And oh, that's you are oh. kidding me. As if that wasn't enough, he wanted to do more. So he started building another one out of an Edmunds with a Lincoln 12-cylinder Zephyr motor in it. This engine is all finished, and it fits right into that car. And it just sits right in it. Holy, Holy smokes. smokes. That's a Lincoln Zephyr. 12-cylinder engine. This guy is not only seeing his dreams, but he's coming up with new ones every time he checks one off the list. Man, it seems like your husband was more than just a car enthusiast. Like, there is not a lot of people around that have the ability and the know-how and the talent to do half of this stuff. Wow. wow. Um, I considered him a mechanical genius, and a lot of other people did, too. They were extremely thrilled to see such rare, exotic race cars and it made it made me feel good because not many people have seen these cars since Larry has passed and it was it made me feel good to show them the cars we see a lot of hot rods and cool stuff but these are definitely in a class of their own but there's great stuff everywhere do you mind if we root around a little I more I want you to root around as much as you want are these for sale yes if you're I feel like they're going to be full of them out, but how much do you want for for that one what a one and a quarter how much do you want for that set how about you take them both for two and a half. I'll give you 200 for the pair. You gotta help me empty them. Then you gotta have to deal. There it is. All right. You got it. He'll empty them. Two lockers. So there might be some more cabinets in here. If you oh. would like to see them. Let's get into this. Yes, okay. This big cabinet. Oh. Before I get into the cabinet. I had a great grandfather from England who loved to fly fish. That's a nice little lure couple of them in there, but you say there's more. I haven't even opened this yet. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Well, I, I think all the fishing oh. stuff's in here. It's a belt buckle. That would be an old safety harness off of a, off of a race car. You've seen people shop before. You know how sometimes they try and get a bulk deal and they'll build a big pile? How do you feel about that? Oh, so you're thinking like maybe things in this cabinet yeah. to make a bulk? Yeah, I'd, I'd put a pile on the floor and be like, this oh, well, that's much. that's possible, yeah. Let's do Let's, that. that well, we can see if we can do that, sure. There you go. There's the start of it. I know people that are fond of this. Reminds oh, them right? of, yeah, reminds them of stuff on their motorcycle. Got some age, because it's all copper and brass. Oh, speaking of age. Hey, Marty. Oh, I know what that is. So someone was a fisherman. There's a couple of them in here. All I know about this piece is that they were manufactured in England uh, around 1840. So it's a four-piece. Fly fishing rod. Yeah. 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 It's older than I am. It's name brand. Anything that has a label on it is a little more sought after. Now this one here doesn't have a name on the on the rod. A lot of these came from overseas with no labels on it. I think I'm gonna put them in a pile. Oh, because you see more. So far this cabinet's been good. How are you doing, Marty? I've just been eyeing up another cabinet. Another cabinet? Did I miss one? Yeah, it's an old wood one. Huh? No, now, this cabinet, you got good taste. I like this. This cabinet came from a newspaper that I used to work at when I was younger. This piece here looks early 1900s to me. Cabinets like this are pretty popular right now because they've got that really kind of industrial look, but there's just so much storage. Yes. You've got all your little stuff in Absolutely, there. Absolutely, yeah. But it's going to depend on the price on this one here. I'd like to get $300 for that. I think the best I can do is $200 on this one here. Two bales of hay. $200, huh? Yeah. Um, okay. You do two? I'll do two. So. $200. <laughs> $200. So, Bam. Hey. How's your little pile going over here? I did find some goodies. The scale. And just a few little guys here. So, there's a couple of old fly rods. The case. So, you're, you're seriously interested in these fly rods? I'm, I'm pretty seriously into them. I buy a lot of them. I would give you... $200 for this pile. Oh, I can't do that. How much without the fly rods would you want just for this, the belt, and that? Just out of curiosity. Um, $50 for okay. those things without the fly rods. OK. And how much, what do you think the fly rods are worth? I think that those two fly rods are worth about $3,000. Wow. For the two.
What do you think the fly rods are worth? I think that those two fly rods are worth about three thousand dollars. Wow. For the two. Now I've or more. I've bought a lot of fly I could rods. Be wrong. A lot of them. But but there's certain brands that do sell at that, and there's certain brands that just list at that. And most of the people that buy bamboo rods only spend about a hundred bucks on them. I was disappointed that they didn't buy the fishing rods. I, I thought that they were in excellent condition. But he was at 100 and I was at 3,000. I don't think we were going to get anything done. <laughs> I'll give you 50 bucks on that pile, and I'll leave these aside. OK. Deal. That sounds great. OK, why don't we yeah. make a pile, empty some cupboards, and get this lady some hay? I think so. All you right. Think, I think you're going to make be making a lot of hay. Make it hay. <laughs> Man, <laughs> that's pretty wild because, like, a lot of people would see just a ton of cool bam teaks and treasures and antiques here, but I think you're looking at a bunch of hay. I'm glad that we both come out as winners here because I think I think we all did. I uh, I came in and started finding stuff as soon as we got on the property. Uh, some of these treasures, like these old Lincoln trucks down here, $150 for those three, really got the ball rolling today. A porcelain license plate. I see so few of them that I'm definitely going to jump at the opportunity to get that. And at 50 bucks, deal. A couple of the old dinky toys. A great little Ronson <laughs> mint case. And those for $50. Down here, I got a neat little package with everything from an eagle lamp to, you know, a racing buckle and harness to some fishing gear, a couple of lures, a great little box, and the scale for another 50 bucks, which puts me at a total of 330 bucks, 3.3-ish bales of hay. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks. And I think Marty, Marty put a pretty big dent in here. I did get some nice big stuff today. We got two sets of lockers here, $200 for the pair. Then we move over to this nice piece here, which had a good story because it came from the newspaper where you worked. Mm -hmm. $200 on that one, too. And then we got this nice big bench under here. $80 on the bench is a good deal. That was $20. And then we got the banjo in here. Settled in at 110 for this guy right here. This is one of my favorite pieces here, the old for fire only bell, and that was $125. The old Ford cluck. I really like it, and for $45, I'll take a chance on that. No problem. And then finally, we got the moose antlers. We talked a little bit about these. You know, they've got some vintage to them. Not too old, but they're, they're full of character anyway. You tried to give those to me, but I told you, no, nothing for free today. I'm going to give you $25 for these because you've got to feed the animals. So that puts me at 8.05 bales. So I hope that helps out a little bit, too. Yeah, that's that extra five that's going to take them over the top. Take them over right. the top. <laughs> so I'm happy we made a dent here for you today. It's been fun. Yeah, it's, it's been, been a blast. It's been a lot of fun. It's it really been has. great meeting you guys. You too. Really Thanks so guys. much. Thank you so much for having us. Yes. Let's go uh, play some Tetris in the van. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times when we're buying from people, they're happy to see it go to a good home. Today's a little bit different because we're happy to spend money, get good deals, but to see it go towards a good cause. That's exactly where it's going today. Like, just a really random assortment of really good stuff. I mean, to be able to empty out, like, the lockers full of auto parts and take those home, that was pretty awesome. And great lockers, too. Mm -hmm. She wanted that stuff gone, and honestly, I feel really good about spending money there because it's gone to a really good cause. And just seeing the stuff that Larry had his hands on and the things that he built, the dude broke the land speed record. Because he wanted to. That guy had a checklist of just incredible things wow. that he did in his life because he wanted to. Walked in with breakfast on your beard. Yeah. Bugs well, on your beard. You got it. That's nasty. Why don't you tie that thing up when you're riding? I do sometimes. So, uh, anything new and exciting here at Modern Hipster? Yes. I know you can look at my blocks there. I was going to say, yeah, it's Modern Hipster. I know. I'm missing the pee. Things are going pretty well around here. Nice. Remember we went to go see Tony the barber? Yes. He wanted to uh, get rid of my uh, mullet, he called it. <laughs> <laughs> they really want to shave your face. But he did sell you a barber pole. He did. 
He sold me the really nice porcelain one. Which is wild. Yep, yeah, and then I got the wood one. And I paid $2.25 for the two. So I've got a guy in town who collects barber stuff. He's got a pole, but he doesn't have that porcelain sign that looks like a pole. Mm. So I sold him that one for three fifty, dollars just for the porcelain sign. Wow. So pretty decent markup on it. I actually was wheeling and dealing out of that same little stockpile. I bought a whole bunch of straight razors that day. Oh, yeah. And he practically threw them at me, which is unsafe most times. <laughs> but at 15 bucks a piece, I think I grabbed about five or six of them. Mm -hmm. So I've already started selling those, and they're ranging from 40 to 60 bucks a piece. And they're going out the door fast, man. Really, really collectible. They're hot right now. Yep. Now they're back on the street. <laughs> which is dangerous, because now <laughs> people are shaving. And honestly, I. I die a little bit inside every time that yeah, happens. Yeah, but you're making good money. I am, but do you know what's going to make me feel better? What? I'm going to go out there and I'm going to find you a silent pee. Dude, if you can find me one, I will give you $5 for it because it's driving me crazy God. that I can't find the other one. You I know have. what? I'm going to go do that because I've never been offered $5 for pee. <laughs> See you later, buddy. See ya.